Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I haven't done a Disneyland Paris video in quite a while so I decided I'd switch it up today and do the 10 top rides at Disneyland Paris. But before I get into it, I just want to let everybody know I am slightly changing up my upload schedule. For the next few weeks, basically until Disney decides to open back up after all of this, hopefully it's a little bit better. I'm gonna only be uploading to this channel once a week, which will be every Thursday at 7 p.m. UK time. This is mostly just due to the fact that I have a lot less inspiration about things to post on my channel. I can't back myself up as I can't visit. I have no vlogs to post or anything like that. I'm just feeling a little bit less inspired. And also less people are searching for my content since obviously nobody is going to Disney at the moment, which is super, super sad. But I will still continue to post once a week. So hopefully we can keep that content super interesting. I will be doing some recipes, other top tens, videos about Disney Plus and anything else that you guys might suggest to me. So please stay tuned every Thursday at 7 p.m. UK time for more content. In other news, I am starting up my second channel, which I mentioned last week, and it will be a general lifestyle channel. There'll be all sorts of different things, such as room transformations, a little bit of vlogging, uh, tasting some vegan foods, cooking, all sorts of different stuff will be going on on that channel, and I will be posting there at least every Sunday at 7 p.m. UK time. If I can keep up, I will be posting more often throughout the week as well. So the channel name will be Lauren matters my full name I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it and if you are interested please head over there as of this Sunday and check out my content let's get straight into it so I'll be working down from number 10 to number one with number one being my absolute favorite ride at Disneyland Paris and for number 10 I have chosen Ratatouille Now Ratatouille is a trackless ride and it has three carts setting off at once. It is 3D and it has moving parts. It is a super cool ride. If you've been on Rise of the Resistance, it's kind of like that, but obviously it is based off the Ratatouille film. So if you haven't seen that, I would definitely recommend watching the Ratatouille film if you're planning to head on that ride if you haven't been on it yet. And exciting news about that one is it is coming to Walt Disney World at some point this year. I think it's around summer, but obviously that may change depending on when the parks open back up. For that ride, you can be any height, which is super cool, so you can take anyone you like on it and it is in the Walt Disney Studios Park. Moving straight on to number nine, we have Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast. Now this is known, I'm pretty sure, as Buzz Lightyear Ranger Spin at Walt Disney World, but it's pretty much the same thing. It's, you're in like a revolving car and you get given a laser gun and you have to shoot targets and you try and get your score up as high as you can. Now when I first went on this ride, I really did not like it because I didn't really understand the concept. I found it really hard. Whereas the more times I've been on it, the more I've started to enjoy it. So I would definitely say, give it a chance. If you don't like it the first time, go on it a few more times and you might start to enjoy it a little bit more. It's it's also a lot more fun if you're if the person sat next to you is somebody that you know if it's a friend or a family member because you can try and beat their score and it's so much fun that way and there is a photo on the ride as well but bear in mind if you've been on Midway Mania this ride is not the same as that it's not 3D and basically you shoot the targets the whole way around the course there isn't different rounds or anything like that and it's probably not as high tech but it is still a lot of fun you can be any height to go on this one as well and it's in the Disneyland Park Moving straight on to number eight, my number eight choice is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril. Now we didn't even discover this ride the first time and the second time we went to Disneyland Paris. I have no idea why, it's kind of off in the middle of nowhere, by, um, it's kind of nearish to Big Thunder Mountain in that area. But this is your classic English theme park roller coaster. It's literally probably 30 seconds or less. It has one loop in it, it's outside, and you're in a car of about 12 people, I think. It is a lot of fun, but sometimes it gets big queues, so it's not always worth the wait. If you can get a fast pass for it, I would strongly recommend um, going to pick one up either in the morning or whenever you get a chance, as I definitely wouldn't wait for two hours for this ride. Another thing about this ride is you do have to be one meter 40 centimeters to get on it. So if you're traveling with children who are shorter than this height then it's definitely not for you and as I've already kind of said this one is in the Disneyland Park as well. Straight on to number seven is It's a Small World. Now this may be controversial and to be honest, all of my decisions might be controversial. This is not a thrill ride. If you haven't been to Disney World before or Disneyland Paris, um, 
don't expect this to be a thrill ride. It is literally the cutest thing ever. It's a little boat ride and you go around and you hear the same song in different languages for approximately five to 10 minutes. And honestly, in my head, if you don't go on this ride, it's not a Disney trip. It is an absolute must do. It's a classic, but as I say, it's not a thrill ride and any hike can go on it. And again, this one is at the Disneyland Park. Number six is Autopia. Now, this is like a drive-in one. It's kind of like Tomorrowland Speedway at Disney World, but it's definitely easier. I remember the first time I went on Tomorrowland Speedway, I was doing that thing where you crash into one side and then you crash into the other side. It was an intense experience. Whereas this one, I'm pretty sure they redid it recently. I'm not even sure whether it will be opening as soon as the parks open again or what the deal is. But this one is so much fun. You can go in it in twos or you can go in it on your own. And basically you just drive around a track and it is so, so much fun. You're completely in control of the car but it does have a metal rod in between the wheels so you can't swerve off too far. You can control the speed as well. You have to make sure you don't crash into people and different stuff like that. It is so, so much fun. You have to be 81 centimeters to go on this ride, but I'm pretty sure there's a higher, there's a higher height restriction if you want to be the driver. Next up at number five is Big Thunder Mountain. Now, if you've been to any Disney, I'm sure you've ridden this ride before. It is a classic Disney roller coaster. It is quite a big roller coaster. It's dark. It ha it goes up to quite high heights. It has a low height restriction of only one meter and two centimeters. So if you have any younger children who really love roller coasters, you can definitely take them on this one. It's a long ride. It lasts for quite a few minutes. I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's definitely worth the wait. Even though usually it doesn't have that high of a weight, you can get on it in about 20 minutes or you can pick up a fast pass. If it is busy in the parks, you may have to wait longer, one to two hours even, but it is such a fun ride and if you haven't been on it before, I would definitely recommend. This ride is at the Disneyland Park as well. Number four is RC Racer. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is only at Disneyland Paris and in Hong Kong as well, I think. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong because I haven't been to Hong Kong, Shanghai or Tokyo Disney's as of yet. So yeah, this is a bit of a unique one. It's a shorter ride and the queue can get quite long as there's only one car at a time. It's basically in a half pipe and the vehicle goes up to one side and then down the other side. It is so, so much fun. It can be quite scary for younger ones though because you can see the top. It's almost as if you're gonna go upside down and then you don't. You do have to be one meter and 20 centimeters to get on this one and it is in the studios park. A tip for this one, if you do like this ride or if you haven't been on it but you fancy it, go later in the evening. Once me and my mum headed there, maybe around seven o'clock, it might have been when either the parade or the fireworks were on in the other park and we managed to get on it twice in about 10 minutes, no fast passes or anything. We just went on it and it was awesome. So definitely try to go at different times of the day that might be a bit less popular and you can get on it dead fast. If not, you might end up waiting for an hour or so. And that one is at the Studios Park, if I didn't already say. Number three is one of my absolute favorite Disney rides. They have recently redone the one at Disneyland Paris and it is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, a new dimension of chills. This is Awesome. If you've been on any Tower of Terror, it's kind of a similar concept, but the track is slightly different and they've changed up the story. I would say now it is terrifying. Now I'm scared of everything, so I really can't say much, but if you have younger children, please don't take them on it unless you know that they will enjoy it. I would not take anyone under the age of maybe eight on this at all, unless they're really, really a daredevil. And my sister who's currently 10, I would definitely not take on this because I know that she would be scared of this. Maybe if you're over the age of 12, you'll probably be okay but under that it definitely depends on the child do not take young children on it even though the height restriction is only one meter and two centimeters so you can literally take a two-year-old if you've got a tall two or three-year-old you can probably take them on this i would not recommend it is a lot scarier than the one in florida as well and um, but it is so so much fun and apparently there are different stories now i'm yet to experience this we always seem to get the one with the little girl and also sometimes it's in french and sometimes it's in english so it's kind of the look of the draw maybe try and go on it a few times so you can kind of get an idea of what the different stories are or you can try and get a French version or an English version depending on which you would prefer. And that is at the Studios Park. Now moving on to number two, Star Wars Hyperspace Mountain. 
Now this ride used to be Space Mountain, but they redid it with a Star Wars theme and it now goes upside down and it's basically a whole new ride. So it is based on the Star Wars story, but it's not one where you need to have watched the Star Wars film to get it. It's just little scenes from it, mostly just like fighting scenes, but it is very, very intense and fast. Every time I go on it, I think, oh, this one's not that bad. Like, it's fine. And then I come off it and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> As I did that, my piece of paper fell on the floor. That's how crazy it is. <laughs> Oh. So yeah, my mum took my, I think he must have been six at the time, six year old cousin on this and he loved it. But again, it definitely depends on your kid. If they're not one for roller coasters, don't take them on it because it is pretty crazy. And again, you have to be one meter 20 to go on this one and it's at the Disneyland park. Now my absolute favorite ride at Disneyland Paris is Crush's Coaster. Now, I think it's probably my favorite because this is the only park it's at, or as far as I'm aware, this is the only park it's at, but it kind of is a bit more of a chill one. Again, when I get on this, I always think, actually, no, this is more crazy than I thought it was, but it is so much fun. Now, at the start, there's like a little bit of the story of Nemo, you kind of go through it, and then you start going up a giant hill. Because it spins as it goes, you could be facing down the hill as you go up, and you're like, wow, this is high up. One thing to note about this one is it gets stuck all the time. I've been stuck on this ride and I've been stuck on, in the queue for this ride probably 10 times. Like every time we go, it manages to get stuck. So bear that in mind. But once you get to the top of the hill, it is then as if you're going in the EAC, the East Australian Current. It's kind of, it's chill. It's not jolty at all. And it whooshes round and it has music in the background and it is so, so much fun. This is probably what I would call like an introductory roller coaster. And it's not super, super kiddie like it's so much fun for adults as well but if you have kids that have probably been on the slinky dog one and they're like yeah this is okay and they want to try something a little bit better it's not as crazy as big thunder mountain or hyperspace mountain or anything like that but it's inside it's a little bit dark and it is so much fun you have to be one meter and seven centimeters to get on this but again judge it not by the height restriction by your own kid if you do have kids and you plan to take them on this because it can be kind of scary it's a little bit dark and things like that and it goes very fast so just be aware that if your kid hasn't been on a roller coaster before maybe take them on the slinky dog one which is in the toy story line before this just to see what they like and this can get massive cues it probably is because of its uniqueness but you could go in five minutes after park opening on some busy day and it will be over two hours already. Now bear in mind this ride has been there for I think 13 years. It's been there for ages. I have no idea exactly how long. And it still gets massive queues. It is such a popular ride because it has such a big audience and it's unique. So make sure if you want to go on this ride, it has no fast pass. Head there as soon as the park opens and you should have a good shot of getting on it. Beware that it does break down a lot and all that kind of thing, but mostly Go and enjoy. If you have already been to Disneyland Paris and you've been on all these rides, give me your top 10 down below in the comments. Obviously, these are all my opinion. I'm not saying this is actually the top 10. This is just my top 10 favorite rides at Disneyland Paris. Of course, this is gonna change when they open all the new worlds, including Frozen. I think they're doing Marvel. They're doing so many new things. I think they might even be doing Star Wars as well at Disneyland Paris. Again, a quick reminder, I am only uploading videos from now on until the Disney parks reopen at least every Thursday at 7 p.m. UK time. Don't forget to go and follow my Instagram and I will see you next time with a brand new video. Bye!